so, and actually this pertains to this, so I don't want to erase this, I'll move this up here, I don't have much space, but, so here's where the confusion resides, right? So it's another expression of the problem, basically the same thing. So the confusion, uh, right, the confusion is this, to say that this, right, to say that this is expletive, is incorrect, right? This is incorrect. For Kant, this is. To say that this is ex explicative is incorrect. Um, if the argument is the only reason why it's explicative is that it follows with necessity and there's no new information, that's incorrect. To look at the same problem, to look at this, and to say that it's amplitive, I spell it right, A M P L I A M P L I T I. To say it's amplitude is correct. For all the reasons that we said before. Right? Um, insofar as it's explicative, then we're the the claim is that it's analytic. If we're saying it's analytic, it's false. If we're saying that it's synthetic, it's it's true. And somewhere in here, he makes the claim that all and I would like to find it. I think it's on the same page, 14. Um, yeah, he's, he says right there, our, uh, I can never pronounce this. Our mathematical judgments are therefore synthetic, and the more plainly according as we take larger numbers, for in such cases it is clear that however closely we analyze our concepts without calling intuition to our aid, without calling intuition to our aid, we can never find the sum by such mere analysis, right? So without intuition, um, you would never be able to arrive at the notion of 12. And that explicitly tells us that intuition is the, the sort of the, the function in which we are able to synthesize our experience in perception, right? That's the function of the intuition, right? So it's amplitude um, and synthetic, not explicative and analytic. Okay, so now if we understand that, we can complicate it even further. Um, thus we can say that 12 is not an element of 7 plus, 7 plus 5, and I'm like, uh, here's Transcendental Philosophy on 1, 2, 3 bullet points up, and I'm not going to write this on the board because I'm running out of space. Um, 12 is not an element of 7 plus 5, that makes sense, um, but the sum, the sum of 7 plus 5 plus synthesis of the concept of 7 and the concept of 5 within intuition, all of that equals 12, right? So how do we get to this? Technically, and I, I just wrote this out sort of explicitly so you could really see how Kant is sort of describing this without, he doesn't say it in this terms, but I, I, this just makes it absolutely clear, I think. Um, 12 is not an element of 7 plus 5, but the sum of 7 plus 5 plus basically the invisible thing that is hard to figure out, plus the synthesis of the concept of 7 and 5 within the intuition equals 12. So what's false? 7 plus 5 equals 12 is an analytic judgment. 7 plus 5 equals 12 is an analytic, thus explicative is incorrect. That's false. What's true? The sum of the sum of 7 plus 5 combined with the synthesis of the concept 7 and 5 within the intuition uh, equaling 12 as a th synthetic judgment, that is correct, that is true. And granted, this is not in any sense easy at all, right? It's not, it's, it's understandably difficult to arrive at that conclusion. You may have to watch this uh, a few times to be able to see how he progresses, but it, it should be clear. All that he's saying is that um, this is the great unknown. How do we get to the equality? 7 plus 5, and the sum, right? This summation points us, directs us, into experience. What does the combination in experience? Our intuition. What is experience? As we said before, experience is the, quote, continual joining together of perception. I perceive 7, I perceive 5, I synthesize it, I have the concept 12, I integrate that concept, or reintegrate that concept back into the initial concept. That action is amplitude. It gives more meaning, if you will, to the concept. And we know that that has to be true 
because it's in the process of ascribing meaning, right? It's in the process of ascribing meaning that our synthetic claims have have uh, value, right? Our analytic claims are effectively meaningless. They're true, but they're effectively meaningless. If we're ascribing meaning to our uh, initial propositions, then the question, the, the answer has to be that the um, uh, meaning is being derived from experience, at least for Kant, right? Uh, meaning is coming from experience. Uh, and to be technical, it's synthetic, right? Um, so the last point then is the role of what he calls transcendental philosophy. And it sounds, it sounds spooky. He doesn't mean anything spooky by transcendental, not otherworldly. Um, all he means by transcendental are the conditions for the possibility of metaphysics. So instead of saying the conditions for the possibility of discussing metaphysics, he just calls it transcendental philosophy. That's all he means by transcendental philosophy. Um, the necessary steps required to answer the question, how are synthetic propositions possible? Right? So in order to talk about a transcendental philosophy, you have to recognize that the transcendental philosophy are the steps that you're going to need in order to talk about the conditions in which we can talk about um, metaphysics. He says that, uh, and I had it up here before, the conditional, right? And I'll just abbreviate transcendental philosophy as TP. Transcendental philosophy precedes metaphysics. So if we have satisfied our condition for transcendental philosophy, then we can successfully say that we're talking about metaphysics. If we fail to satisfy um, uh, our, our condition, it'll be more problematic, right? It's going to be more problematic. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, well, not in a second, we'll talk about that in another series. Um, next point, in attempting to define this transcendental philosophy, Kant appeals to, and I said, to two things, pure mathematics and pure science. In later discussions, we'll see um, the role of the appeal to pure math and pure science. And then the last point, which is very, very important, and I'll actually erase some of this to discuss this point. The last point is... Universal considerations uh, apply both to the emerging fact and from the emerging fact. So if we have a fact here, we're going to have universal We're going to have universal considerations We're going to have universal considerations that apply to the facts, but also that emerge from the facts. And we'll see what these universal considerations are within his transcendental philosophy, right? What are the universal considerations that apply to my understanding of a thing, that, that sort of interpret the nature of this thing? And also, how do I experience this thing? Um, uh, just as a, I'm not going to give it away just yet, um, Obviously, this is going to this section is going to be contingent on my experience of the thing, and it will call the thing into question. And Kant delves into this in a lot of detail. But also, what is it that um, is being applied universally to um, any discussion of this thing? And as we progress through the analysis, we'll sort of more clearly define uh, both of these criteria. Right? It's the universal considerations which both apply to and from the emergent facts of the matter. Um, with that said, uh, that concludes the analysis of section five in the last section in uh, Kant's Prolegomena. Um, and this is the preamble. The next will be, I think, officially chapter one starts next. Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, the first part of the main transcendental question. Um, so the next is the first, the first real sort of section. All of this has been sort of a prelude um, and as I said before, I'm not going to go through and recap everything, but um, what's important to recognize is the role that um, the synthetic a priori plays and ultimately um, the challenge that metaphysicians are going to have to answer, the challenges that metaphysicians will have to answer in order for their, their paradigm, their discipline to have any viability for Kant. Um, and we'll see what all those things are in uh, subsequent videos. So with that, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Goodbye.